The Japanese Grand Prix is underway and we have had first looks at the upgrades teams have brought to Japan, but digging deeper has revealed some surprises. We have lots of pictures to go through and lots of upgrades to talk about. Let's start this video off with the rear wings. First, let's take a look at the top four teams, Red Bull, Ferrari, McLaren and Mercedes. Red Bull have brought a medium downforce rear wing here alongside some significant upgrades. Ferrari have retained their medium to low downforce rear wing for Japan as well and have brought some interesting upgrades to the car's rear. What's interesting is that Ferrari haven't brought any other rear wing specifications this season, sticking to that medium to low downforce configuration. This really proves the strong rear end the SF24 has, giving Ferrari the option of retaining similar specifications for the majority of the races. Also, the Ferrari has good high-speed cornering performance, so the lower downforce package should provide a good balance for the SF24. McLaren have brought a medium to high downforce rear wing to Japan, leaning more towards more downforce. The MCL38 is a good car around corners, so they should be naturally strong at Suzuka's Sector 1. Opting for more downforce could be a compromise the team is willing to make, considering the car's overall draggy nature. Mercedes have opted to retain their medium downforce rear wing, the same they used at Australia and Bahrain. Mercedes also have brought some spare parts for the W15, which we will discuss in this video. Next, let's move on to Aston Martin, Sauber, Williams and Racing Bulls. Aston Martin have gone for a straight-up high downforce rear wing, the most loaded of any team. Aston Martin have also brought a significant upgrade package to Japan, which we believe is to improve the car's tyre wear alongside improving the car's overall balance. Second comes Sauber, having brought a medium to high downforce rear wing, leaning a little towards the high downforce side. Racing Bulls have brought a medium downforce rear wing. Out of these four teams, Williams are running the least downforce, having brought a medium downforce rear wing. Aston Martin, Sauber and Racing Bulls are trading more efficiency for downforce gains, prioritizing Sector 1's high-speed sweeps, while Williams have gone for a balanced compromise. Finally, moving on to the last two rear wings from Haas and Alpine. Alpine have gone for a medium downforce rear wing approaching the weekend with a balanced compromise. Haas have gone for a medium to low downforce rear wing, leaning towards more of a low downforce setup prioritizing top speed over downforce. The Haas car has been good on race trim this season and has performed well around high-speed corners, so it will be interesting to see how this setup works for them. Now let's go over the upgrades teams have brought to the Japanese Grand Prix, starting from Alpine. Alpine have brought a new front wing specification to Japan, a design leaning more towards the concept mastered by Red Bull. This team has tried on drastic front wing designs with all sorts of curves and shapes, but now have decided to lean towards a more traditional concept. Still, the nose is connected to the first element and still looks like a gigantic F2-style nose, but the rear elements have been smoothed out, promoting more outwash. The Alpine A524 has understeering issues on the first three races, so hopefully this new front wing dials that trait down a bit, as understeer could pose a significant problem for drivers around the high-speed Sector 1 of Suzuka. Next, let's touch a little on Mercedes. The Silver Arrows have retained the floor spec they introduced at Bahrain after testing, disregarding the launch spec they ran at Australia. Many will have eyes on the W15's performance this weekend, and they are currently in no man's land. Hamilton literally said that the W15 transition from being the best car he has driven in the past three years to the worst car he has driven without making any sort of setup changes between sessions. Now, James Allison, making his analysis, has put together a theory of differing temperatures between sessions is causing the W15 to behave inconsistently. But that is the same for every team, so it's Mercedes' problem to fix. Next, let's talk about Ferrari's upgrades. Overlooking the car from the pit lane pictures, the SF24 seems to be the same car that ran in Australia. But diving deep, this car has some upgrades applied. First is that the team has opted to retain the aero wing they introduced at Australia over the car's rear top wishbone. Now, this aero wing seems to be influencing airflow around the beam wing, which the team is playing a lot with. 
Ferrari for the track's differing downforce natures are only playing around the beam wing to work that car's aerodynamic distribution differently. This was evident at Jeddah, where they ran a single element beam wing to improve top speed, rather than opting to go for a lower downforce rear wing. The same can be said for Japan as well. Rather than opting for a medium downforce rear wing, the team has added the second element to the beam wing, working downforce by the floor and car's rear. Talking about upgrades, the upgrade seeming is made around the car's rear suspension. The wishbones have been reportedly realigned by a few millimeters to improve the SF24's working ride height ranges. Now let's move on to the biggest upgrade packages of the weekend, starting with the Aston Martin AMR24. Aston Martin have introduced significant upgrades, much bigger than what we expected. All we thought the team was going to introduce was bits to the floor edge to work on tyre degradation. But Aston Martin have brought more than that. The Silverstone team has completely reworked the floor edge and have introduced a new side pods design. Starting from the top, the side pods seem to be heavily inspired by the RB19, the reminiscent double splitter approach focusing on achieving greater outwash. Actually, we have a picture of the Aston Martin AMR24 covered by Flowviz paint during the Bahrain pre-season testing. As you can clearly see that there was no airflow optimized around this part where the team has now introduced the splitter approach. This optimization, I believe, could also help improve the Aston car's overall tire degradation, as the high tire wear of the AMR24 is of aerodynamic nature. So the more optimization the team can make around aerodynamics, the more improvements the team will be able to see around tire wear. Moving on to the floor edge, the design language has been completely reworked. Starting, the bodywork around the floor edge has been risen slightly to allow more air to move under the floor. Moving on to the back, we can see a cutout around the rear floor edge. Now, this could be down to two reasons. One is to optimize the floor for the changes made in front. Second is to play around tire squirt to aid in better tire degradation. Taking a look at one more detail, Aston Martin has added this opening around the car's rear suspension, a similar opening to that of the Red Bull design. This seems to be an important aerodynamic aspect, utilizing cooling as aero improvements. One more detail missed by most is the aerodynamic detailing Aston has made around the car's front suspension's upper rear leg, aiding in better aero performance. Next, let's focus on Red Bull's upgrades. As we said before, there is no zero pods being introduced, but it has been more changes around the car's cooling. Straight up, Red Bull have removed the engine cover air outlets, but have added two openings near the car's halo. Removing the air outlets around the engine over is all to do with reducing the amount of turbulent air interrupting the car's efficient aerodynamic activity. But the addition of two new inlets seems to be to compensate for that cooling loss, and this inlet has been added in a fashion where it is aiding both aerodynamics and cooling. But one detail most failed to notice is the air deflector or the new wing added as a support to the car's side mirror structure. This is important as the curved deflector is separating airflow into two directions, one towards the car's side pod's top while the other towards the newly created cooling inlets near the car's halo. This wing is added to ensure cleaner airflow on both directions, minimizing turbulence created by this new air inlet. Overall impressive use of aerodynamics, I would say, by the Red Bull engineers. The RB20's development is continuing to impress, and many other ZAR developments are also very interesting to see. So, what are your impressions about these upgrades teams have introduced at Japan this week? We are very much into your thoughts and perspectives in the comments section down below. And on your way down, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of our future uploads to keep yourself up to date about the 2024 Formula 1 season.